This screencast will show you how to use Screencast-O-Matic to make a screencast. Um, Screencast-O-Matic is free. They do have paid versions, um, but I have a YouTube account which is also free, um, so I can upload them right to my YouTube account and I don't require any storage space on Screencast so it doesn't require me to to pay anything for it. I would guess there are some added features to um, having the pro account um, but for where I'm at right now I don't really need them. So again it's Screencast-O-Matic and it's very easy when you hit start recording it brings up a dialog box and you can't see it probably right now but down in this bottom left corner um, there's just a play and a record button. Um, I've had to restart this twice. I'll advise that when you're making a screencast you have a little bit of an outline or a script of what you want to cover so that you don't have to keep starting yours over again. Um, but all I have is just a headset with a microphone um, and it works just fine. So I'm going to show you how um, I'm using blend space to create an activity that my class is going to do next week. We are going to have the Chromebooks for the whole class period. Um, and so this is what they're going to do. When you go to blend space, um, it asks you as a login or sign up. Um, either one, as long as you have a Chrome account, um, it's a lot very easy um, to sign in. It'll ask you just to log in with a Google account. If you're already logged into your Chrome account, um, you don't even have to enter your username or password. It's automatically entered because BlendSpace is a Google app. So this is my account. I have a couple of different BlendSpaces that I've done before and uh, I actually showed you a couple of different screencasts um, that showed you how to have kids sign up and join classes. Um, but I'm going to create a new lesson today. So when you create a new lesson it brings up uh, a template. This is your workspace and I'm going to call this Mount Vesuvius. And this is where you can, it says drop your resources. These are the different options that you have to drop in. So you can put in a video from YouTube. Um, you can do a Google search. If you type it in here, let's say I want to search Mount Vesuvius. It brings up anything that I would normally find in Google. Um, and I can do images or on the web. Open Ed. I don't actually do a whole lot with Open Ed um, or Flickr or EduCreations, but again all of these are different options that, that work. Um, I'm going to start with a YouTube video and I already have one that I wanted to use just have to find it. Um, I'm going to start with something that's just a little shorter um, just to get them interested in what they're going to be reading about. So all you do really is just drag it over here and the video will automatically pop up in there. So the next thing I'm going to do is add my document that I'm going to use from Google. I've already created this so all I need to do now is link it. So in my Google Drive for Mount Vesuvius just drag and drop. Um, the first thing that students are going to need when they get into that Google Doc is um, an article that I have saved on my flash drive. So I'm going to click Upload Media Files. And just like if you were uploading to anything, you search for your file that you want to upload. Finding it will be the key. Writing research. Oh, what did I save it under? There we go. And I actually have two that I'm going to use here. So the first one is Buried Under 10 Feet of Ash. And once it loads in here, you just drag it over. And then I need one more file from here. And that is Mount Vesuvius from World Book. <coughs> and I drag that in. So for students to, to, to go through and view this, um, the first thing you would need to do is share it. Um, I'm just going to share it on my website through Weebly um, when I get to that point um, with a hyperlink. I could, if I wanted to, add a quiz on here. Um, I could have the kids log into their account and I could share it with them that way, but I'm not going to do that for today. But um, when the kids see it, they'll see this play button and it just walks them through each of the different activities. 
So they can watch the video. Which I'm not going to have you do. And then it gives me the document. And it tells them what they need to do. Now I actually realize that I need to go back and change this because I don't believe they're going to be able to make a file copy of it from here. Um, they'll actually have to do that from my website. But this has all the directions of what they need to do. The next activity is what they're going to do to read the first article. And you could upload PDFs. You could upload Word documents as well. Um, but I just have the PDFs in this case. So they're going to read this article and then answer some of the questions in their Google Doc. And so I have it set with the first article they're going to read, then the second article, which is already on here as well. Um, and I would guess that some of the kids are going to get done um, more quickly than others. So I had found another video that was a little longer and a little more inform informative um, about the actual history of the uh, eruption in Pompeii. And so I'm going to drag that over Oops! in case any of them have a little bit of extra time at the end of the period. Um, they can watch that video. Okay, So I'm going to copy my hyperlink that I'm going to use to share it and go to my Weebly account. Sorry, thought I was already logged in on this computer, and I'm not. And to edit Weebly, or to add documents to Weebly, um, it's very similar to Blend Space. It's a lot of drag and drop, which makes it very easy to use. This is a very short mini unit that we're going to be using. Oh, just something to kind of show you different things that you can do. Our team website, um, our home page, we put some things about the kids on here. So we've got a video of the kids lip syncing, uh, field trip information, um, and down at the bottom we have some project pictures. And you can put slideshows and all kinds of different things. And we also have a link to Infinite Campus on here for parents. So lots of different things that you can do with Weebly. Um, you'll see that we each have our own page. I'm going to go to my page and just this week in language arts, if I don't have a major project going on, this is usually where I direct the kids to go. Um, this will be for next week. So you drag in your title. The difference between title and text, the title is a little bit bigger in font, um, although you can enlarge anything. Um, and change the, the font color. It's very easy to do, almost as if you were working in Word. And I'm looking for the date next week. It is May 27th. Yeah. Through the 30th. And for my blend space today, I think I'm going to link it in as a button because you can just copy your hyperlink in there. So if you click on the button, it brings up a box. I'm like everything centered. And I had already put in that link or copied that link. I also like to have everything open in a new window in case they need to go back to something. Both windows are already open. Um, click Save. And then I need to say what this is. So this is my mount. Oops. Vesuvius Blend Space Activity for Tuesday. And then I publish it. And when you publish it, I always like to go back and, of course, make sure everything works. So if I go back to my This Week in Language Arts now, I can see I have a button. When the kids click on the button, it takes them to the Blend Space account, and all they have to do is click play, and it walks them through all the different papers that they're going to need, all in one neat space.
So um, I think blend space is a pretty basic, easy uh, setup, which is why I like it. Um, you can do quizzes on here. There are a lot of more advanced features, but just for getting basic information out to the kids for now, um, this is easy enough for me to learn on my own, um, and it's very functional for what I need for my class. So I hope this helps you.